guys. Still working on Amiga stuff, but today I wanted to go some more GoTek stuff. As you know, the GoTek comes with a numerical interface for displaying which disk you're emulating and inserting into your Amiga, your Atari, your PC, whatever. Um, so I recently reflashed uh, my firmware to flash floppy to get off the Cortex loader because there's a lot of problems with Cortex. It does work but you have a lot of writing problems when you're trying to write ADFs or DMS files on the Amiga to a uh, file slash floppy, a blank, whatever it be. There's a lot of issues with it. It's not very reliable. Um, I've had numerous issues in my previous videos where I had to set it to DF1 instead of DF0, but a lot of the games I want require DF0, and it's a pain in the rear to keep switching the jumpers. So I got an FTDI to USB programmer for like $3 on eBay. Came with a little USB cord, the FTDI, you plug it in to the, the pinout jumpers, and uh, I had to solder this header in, and I luckily I had one. It's a uh, five pinner. So you just solder that in, you hook the things up. It's super simple. There's a programmer that comes with it all. It took like five minutes. Um, I was going to do a video on it, but it really wasn't deemed worthy. But today, I went to my favorite computer store called Micro Center. Uh, it's about an hour away from me. And I picked up a monochrome, I don't know if you can see this focus here, a monochrome 128 uh, by 32 I2C OLED uh, screen. And it's a very tiny screen. And we're going to be soldering this in today. It requires a pin header and then some wires. So this is the screen. It's just about the size of the screen that's in there. I might have to do a little bit of modification, but it just requires the four wires that are already on the GoTek. Comes with a small pin header, which we're going to solder it on the microscope so you can see. So the pin header goes on like this, and your wires from your GoTek will go to the four points on it. So what I'm going to do is we've got the microscope all hooked up and we're going to take the cover off of the GoTek here which if you have a sticker over yours it's three screws and it's a little tiny board inside. And when you remove the top cover that's what removes the pressure for the little current display. Now if I unwind this you're going to notice that currently the wires are going across, right? If I remove this, they're going left to right. When we do the modification, we're going to turn these sideways. So instead of going across, we're going to go up and down. And that's just how it goes. And there's nothing else you need to do. There's a speaker mod. You'll notice there's a power LED right here, which is usually hidden. You can't see it, and it's just bent around. The green here is just bent around to show activity on the front plate. But if you wanted, you could punch another hole. Actually, there is a mark out inside where you could knock out the plastic if you wanted to have a constant power light for your floppy. So here we have the screen. You can see it has the SDA, SCL, reset, ground, 3.3, and VIN. Now, on the original GoTek drive, it has so make sure my tip is cleaned. Get some flux. Now, like the great. Lewis Rossman said, the bigger the glob, the better the job. Now remember, you are also under a microscope. So if this looks goopy or funny, it doesn't really matter. Because all of this comes off. Okay. I just don't want to burn anything. Alright, so the part has been fluxed. Believe it or not, that gob is not that big it just looks 
humongous on camera. Zoom out from the screen here to see what I was working with. So that is, there's the microscope. Just a little cheesy, you know, the Chinese junk one that everybody uses. And I was soldering, and I was soldering these six pins. Now, that's done. We can clean the part. I did get some actual 91 isopropyl alcohol, which I will just then clean said flux off. I'm just using a piece of printer paper. So I'm going to wash the part down. It's just scrubbing some of the flux off, but watch this. You'll be able to see it dry. There. Okay, so it's repositioned here. Let me zoom in here. I'm gonna show you what we gotta do. So there are four pins we gotta worry about. It is the uh, SDA, SCL, and the ground and the uh, RST for me. So what we got to do is this. It's red and black on the top. Mine is blue and white on the bottom. So I just flipped them. So I have white and blue and then red and black. And then I basically take the red and black here and the red goes to SDA. The black goes to the SC, SCL and then the other one is just mirrored you just flip it if you have identical colors if you have identical colors on here you just mirror it so it will look now some of these are on the side and you only have four pinouts it's it's perfect you just do SDA SCL and then you flip the other ones which is your ground and your reset so in an act of pure stupidness I didn't break anything I was doing the whole video and realized I forgot to press record. My apologies. Okay, so on the, the board here, on the GoTech, you have four pins, right? They're like right on top of each other, kind of like my fingers like this. <coughs> the top, when you're looking at the GoTech, the top left pin, um, your wire collar can vary. The top left pin is always going to be ground, okay? The top right pin will be SDA so bottom left is going to be your VCC or it might be labeled VIN or something like that right I'm trying to get this out of the way here the bottom right pin will be your signal clock or SCK so ground SDA VCC SCK so the GoTech pinouts are like this for your monitor now once you have flash floppy installed, now my little screen here, the wires were a little off, so I used a four pin, uh, anyway, I used a four pin like a floppy connector from another unit and just wired it in. So, if I did this right, we should see flash floppy whatever on here. Let's turn the Amiga on, it's hooked up, bingo, oh, I'm upside down, hold on. There we go. I didn't have it plugged, the USB drive plugged in. So this is copy this to master, let's see. Auto boot, that's track zero. And you'll notice, it only goes over this far. Why? So you can fit this big housing in the uh, Amiga. And on my screen it says FF manager. So we're gonna go, uh, what is this direction? It shows you the track. This is my data flyer auto install and on my screen data flyer auto install so this one says next one is 
install 3.14.adf and there it is right down there and here install 3.14.adf idling on track 25 it's number 2 of 11 I don't have a lot on here up one locale I just have the 3.14 modules storage fonts extras workbench 3.14 this is so much better because you don't have to keep tally on what the heck was on your list now you're still gonna have to do your lister but for your reference you can see that so we're gonna get this mounted back in the case tighten up these wires a little bit because I have a couple that are just a loose connector uh, we'll fix this and we'll be good to go and you'll notice the screen goes off when not in use so you don't burn it out and then when you switch it pops right back up data flyer auto install and I got a GVP in here too and that's my 11 tracks on my thing and as you can see it tells me what it is and there's the GVP install so let's get this wrapped up and then we'll do a final so here we are with it back in the screen mounted ah screen is in there straight pretty cool now we can put our thumb drive in GVP install and PAM it's on the screen access light works screen is in there um, yeah works pretty good so we'll go up a track empty master auto boot that's the track zero and it works parks ahead at 40 now if I access this, this is like my data flyer disk okay so when I access it you actually see the track reads that it's reading 45, 74, 78, 79 if I run it like I'll just run a shell that's cool this screen as of course you can see is longer I hot glued it in there are two nubs that stick out to support the original tiny thing right because the tiny thing clicks exactly into this cutout right so the tiny one actually will fit inside that hole this screen is longer it actually extends across further there are two little plastic nubs I had to whop off with a razor blade yes I know you can't go back I don't plan on going back I'll keep this but this actually goes in the plastic so it, I could hot glue this in I don't mind it's sealed up I ran my wires underneath the case itself on the top of the GoTech has a plastic depression gosh plastic piece right here that when you clip this on it's gonna apply pressure to the front of that and keep it squared in now I'm gonna nub mine off because I hot glued mine in perfectly so I don't need that extra pressure I don't care about it once it's in it's staying in forever and then I'll drop it on the floor so make sure your screen is straight when you glue it in because that's gonna be it for a while and you can adjust it while the glue is hot and then that's it so that's the GoTech uh, OLED screen mod for flash floppy 1.0 I'll put some links in the description for the parts and where you can get them on eBay. Most likely they'll be from China, so they'll probably take a month. But if you have a local electronic supplier, like a Micro Center of Fry's or something similar, it's usually in the Adreno section or the, the little maker bot section where you can buy parts and you're good to go. Thanks for watching.